President Trump says he's willing to go nuclear over the Supreme Court. During an interview today with our own Sean Hannity, the president said this. Chuck Schumer, others threatening that we've never had a Supreme Court justice filibustered, but there's a chance that might happen. Hey, if that happens, happens, would, happens, would you want Mitch McConnell to use the nuclear option? Which yes, I would. You would? I would. Have you talked to him about look, it? We have obstructionists. These are people that don't want to... I, I almost think... They, uh, they have what they did to Jeff Sessions, who's a great man and a wonderful man, and then they delayed it another week because they have a one-week delay option. That's not fair to a man. Other people are delayed. Uh, look at Pompeo for CIA. But will this backfire on the White House? Here to talk about it is former Speaker of the House and informal Trump advisor Newt Gingrich. Mr. Speaker, good to see you. Now, Harry Reid cracked open the door on all this by changing the rules to 51 votes for cabinet and lower level judicial nominations to help President Obama. If Senator Schumer decides to filibuster here and demand 60 votes for the president's pick that he says is coming next Thursday, is it time to go nuclear? Well, I think uh, that Senator McConnell has said again and again this nomination will go through, period. Now, one way it could go through is that uh, seven or eight, because you have the vice president who can also mm -hmm. vote, uh, seven or eight of the Democrats could decide that they're going to vote for the nominee. Some of whom are, are from states that are up for election in two years and states that Trump right. carried big time. Absolutely. And, and you're going to have a nominee who is going to be, you know, have all of the NRA and, and, and gun rights advocates on their side, the business community on their side, the right to life groups on their side. I mean, there will be a lot of different forces in the country that want this nominee approved. But you know this will be a big deal. The mainstream media will say Donald Trump is blowing things up. He's going nuclear. He's rewriting the Senate rules. Okay. Doesn't that, who, okay. But doesn't that run the risk of blowing up the rest of his agenda? No, because they could then turn right around and say, you know, and frankly, if you try filibustering the legislative stuff, what if we just eliminate the, the, the whole process? So, speaking of going nuclear, tonight Steve Bannon, who had re not really said anything publicly in months, is going nuclear on the media, among other things, telling the New York Times, I want you to quote this, the media here is the opposition party. They don't understand this country. They still do not understand why Donald Trump is the president of the United States. He adds, the media should be embarrassed and humiliated and keep its mouth shut and just listen for a while. What do you think about that? Well, I think that it would take a true optimist to believe that the elite media is going to keep its mouth shut and listen. Uh, but I think it's an interesting idea. Uh, I, you know, Dennis Prager wrote a very sobering column yesterday talking about the second American Civil War and saying that what you were seeing on Saturday in the demonstrations, when what you were seeing with the young fascists who were out there breaking up windows and things on Friday, uh, really is a sign of how separate we are becoming. I think that's true, and I think 80, 90 percent of the news media is on the side of the anti-Trump, uh, pro-establishment order. That may be so, but to say the media should keep its mouth shut, what about the First Amendment, Mr. Speaker? We didn't, see, didn't say it was going to take away their right to be stupid. Well, keep your mouth shut. What does that mean? It means that, and I think he's right about this, if, if here you have reporters who were wrong, they were wrong through the primaries. They were wrong in the general election. They, they have been consistently wrong. And then none of them seem willing to stop and think about it. Uh, furthermore, they are truly alien from most Americans. They live, they live in enclaves. I mean, um, Charles Murray's book, Coming Apart, is brilliant in pointing out that these are all people who live in small elite communities mm -hmm. who talk to each other, socialize with each other, marry each other, go to school with each other, and then wonder about all those other strange people out there called Americans. Another big issue is Obamacare, of course. And next hour, President Trump is also going to tell Mr. Hannity that maybe we should just let Obamacare, in his words, explode. And Democrats, he says, will be begging to fix it, that it will collapse under its own weight. And Matt Lewis wrote today uh, in the Daily Beast uh, that, you know, maybe it's better to let that happen instead of going down the field. He said, in other words, instead of throwing a Hail Mary and risking a huge interception, Republicans might be better off just trying to gain a few yards and move the ball down the field. Your thoughts? Well, my thoughts are that a lot of very smart people, including Dr. Tom Price, who's going to be Secretary of Health and Human Services, uh, have thought about this a lot. Uh, it's, it's, it's not about Obamacare in the end. It's about 
The current system of delivery doesn't work. It is too expensive. It has too many flaws. Uh, is it possible to methodically build a solution that gives us better health outcomes at lower cost with greater convenience? But he's suggesting maybe don't repeal it right away. Let this just die on its own and then come up with something. I never thought I'd hear Speaker Newt Gingrich say, let's sit on the ball a little bit. No, I'm not saying that. Okay. What, what I'm saying is I think you can find good, and I agree with Trump on this, from this standpoint. Trump is very, President Trump is very concerned that we not repeal it without a fix. Mm -hmm. Because he doesn't want 23 million people worried about their insurance. And I think that's frankly pretty smart. Uh, for a guy who is supposedly not a politician, not scaring people is a good starting point. But Obama could have learned from it. Last question for you. Callista Gingrich, your wife, is now being talked about as a potential U.S. ambassador to the Vatican. Is this Republican couple headed to Rome? Well, I have no idea. That that's up to uh, President Trump. But what are we're, the indications? We're, we're very honored. We have been told that she is on the list. Uh -huh. But there are also some other very fine people who are on that list. She's actually uh, tonight singing at the Right to Life Mass at the Basilica, where she's been in the choir for 21 Maybe years. Maybe getting her voice ready for a trip to Italy. We'll see. Uh, we'll, we'll find out. I'm sure she'll tell me if it happens. Send her our best wishes. Good to see you, Mr. <laughs> Thank Speaker. Thank you.